just left Ashland, heading toward Minnesota, and found another artesian well. And boy, do these things fill up your bottles fast. A lot of this beautiful stained glass mural. Well, we're driving through Iron River. We're not going to go through the main business district. But, uh, yeah, another iron town on the way to Superior, Wisconsin, and Duluth, Minnesota, the next big city that we'll go through. Perhaps the last big city for a while. Here's an old fashioned DW that was actually mentioned in the uh, tour that we're following. We're coming into uh, Superior, Wisconsin. The old part. Uh, and we're on our way down to Cloquet, Wisconsin. We're going to, or Minnesota, excuse me. Once we get into Minnesota, we're going to uh, go down there to see the only working Frank Lloyd Wright gas station in the world. An accordion museum. Oh, that looks very interesting. Never heard of such a thing. They give lessons. They have ensembles and concerts. That is so funny. Heading into Minnesota on US 2. I decided to go down to Cloquet, Minnesota before coming back up to Duluth because I want to see the Frank Lloyd Wright uh, gas station. Another item off my bucket list. I'm now looking at the only Frank Lloyd Wright designed gas station in the world. They even do homage to him on the, on the sign. This is so cool. It even has a, an observation lounge in the upper level. It's a place where his idea was to store gas in the tanks up above the, the roof, which you can see up here. And then while you were waiting for your car to be serviced, Wait in this waiting room up over the station, and there's even restrooms. I can't believe I just used the bathroom in a Frank Lloyd Wright service station, the only one in the world. Yeah, you can see it needs a little work up there, but otherwise, it's in pretty good shape. They did paint the floor brown instead of Cherokee red, though. I'll bet this was for a pay phone back in the day. The one in Buffalo had a, believe it or not, a fireplace uh, designed. And he wanted the gas stored in overhead tanks. Yeah. Real smart, Frank. <laughs> It's so cool that it's still a working service station and they take it very matter of factly. The station has this Frank Lloyd Wright sign also. I don't know if he originally had his name on there or if it was linked with the name of the owner. But this is in the 
little town of Bouquet, Minnesota. Spelled like croquet, only with an L. I don't know how pleased Frank would be with having a laundromat attached to the back of this magnificent structure, though. This is a 280-foot, five, uh -oh, I think it's going up. foot lift bridge. It puts the gates down. I think it's going to go up. Said it goes up in 30 seconds. Probably doesn't go up all the way. Just yeah. high enough for whatever ship is going on. Maybe, under? I don't know. I'm guessing again. That big weight up there is helping to raise it, I guess, huh? What big weight? The white thing coming down. Oh. That white thing coming down, okay. Are there other boats coming through? There's one going through a sail Look how high that thing is. It's a sail boat going through right now. Oh, I see. Oh, you see you can see the sail. the sail. Yeah. Looks like it's all or nothing. Huh. There's another one. Boat. It's cool. You can't see the boats, just the sails. 30. So maybe two minutes. other side of Park Point in Duluth now. Got seagulls swarming all over. And this is a public beach. On the north side of Park Point. And way over there is downtown Duluth. This is an amazing city. I've enjoyed getting to know it a little bit. We drove across the bridge and are now on um, Park Point, which is a long stretch of island uh, out into the bay. And we happened across this amazingly gorgeous 150 or so feet of garden dotted with artifacts from the old hotels the wash up here on the beach because someone back in the 60s thought it would be good to have urban renewal and destroyed all the old, old buildings and dumped them into the bay anyway we were admiring the garden when the owner came home and her name is Betty and she lives in this beautiful house here and she and her husband own this lovely hotel. 
which caters to boat watchers. Yes, there are people who like to just sit around and watch the boats come through. And she gave us a 20 minute interview um, about her garden and about Duluth, which we're gonna put up separately. But basically she started this garden uh, in memory of her mother who was one of the original Rosie the Riveters and also loved the garden. So we just thoroughly enjoyed this. Despite the dredging operations going out, going on in the bay. But there's a, here's a view of Duluth. At least this end of it. It's a very pretty and unusual town. Not what I expected. Yes, it's industrial, but it also has amazing beauty like this. Betty specializes in dahlias. Can you believe that is a dahlia? Amazing. To give you a little perspective. It's dark, but Betty's garden is right there in front of the hotel and then working back this way and then the lift bridge is back there and we are parked behind these bushes. Betty told us that this is a public beach and that we could park there overnight. So I was kind of stoked with that. So we're just going to sit here and chill for a little bit. Look at all the antennas on top of the mountain. The hill. Yeah. Top of the hill. Another sailboat. Just leaving along. And another one coming up. I don't know what that one looks like. So we're just here sitting in our lawn chairs on the public beach in Duluth. And I can't turn it around. This is the public beach and in front of us is the water the channel where the boats go through. And up on the hill behind us is the Duluth. So, that's kind of cool. It's a houseboat. Did you say you saw it on the other side? This is dredging apparatus in front of us, so I don't know exactly how it works, but. Looks like the city's starting to light up. Where the train is? 